All right. Well, as we head to our breakouts, uh, a round of applause for Perry one more time as a thank you. Thank you. Also, I neglected to point out and celebrate that it's biscuits and gravy day. So can we give it up for the kitchen crew? And of course, uh, the guys that are in the booth are working really hard right now because the entire soundboard got reset uh, the last few days, apparently, and so there were no settings. That's why it was a little chaotic. So can we give those guys a round of applause as a thank you uh, as well? Because let's be honest, none of us wish we had their job, especially in that moment. So uh, they're standing in there for us, and uh, we really appreciate it. So please come back and do this again sometime. Hey, uh, if you're in the Perspective series uh, with, with uh, the last few weeks, then welcome back. We're glad you're here. If you're watching on YouTube, we're glad you stuck with it uh, for week five as well. Hopefully you got your life map pulled together some version. If not, no worries. What we're going to do today is plug and play either way, whether you have a life map or not. Uh, but it is uh, really helpful because it offers a, a chance at a deeper perspective. We walk around every day looking through various lenses uh, that our past and our story have shaped and molded in us and have kind of led us up to a certain point. Uh, and that's what we do. We, we navigate life and we look and we assess. We look through those lenses, we make decisions, and then we keep moving forward and keep uh, allowing our perspective to shift and to mold and to shape based on what happens to us, what we read in the Bible about God, uh, the relationships we have, all kinds of different things. Uh, and so today, in week five of this series, we're actually going to turn the page now and go a little bit different direction. Uh, we spent the last two weeks for you looking back, and we're still going to look back, but uh, you were working with post-it notes and writing things, and I was setting timers, and you know, you had study hall, and, uh, and it, was, it was great. Uh, hopefully you have a map that looks a little something uh, like this, and if not, no worries. I know a lot of you guys did it online too, so... Uh, you can look at it different ways, but these are, uh, this, is, this is me. Uh, uh, the yellow are the positive things, the pink are the painful things, the blue are the seasons of my life that I feel like some chapters that I've been in, and the green are the lessons, most of which I've had to learn the hard way, right? Uh, pain is such a great uh, teacher for us, and I often say as men, uh, honestly, as human beings, our most valuable resource that we have as individuals is called PAW, P-A-W, Painfully Acquired Wisdom right? Uh, and, and this is part of why this activity is so important is because you really, if you, if you go through the pain, you might as well learn the lesson, right? You might as well uh, get the gold that God wants to entrust to you uh, through that, get the reward for that. And so um, that's part of why we do this is so we can move forward, right? So we can continue to do that. Uh, also, though, we want to look back so we can get clarity. I love what this sign says, and I point this out every single time uh, week in this series. I don't know where I'm going from here, but I promise it won't be boring. That's what we're after as well as we think about perspective is, God, what do you want? What's, what's your perspective on what's best for us? And we want to continue uh, to do that. As we turn the corner now and start sharing uh, bits and pieces of our stories, just a couple caveats. One, don't, you don't have to share anything you don't want to share, right? Nobody can make you do anything, to be honest. Uh, just a reminder about that. I keep telling my children that every day. Uh, uh, nobody can make you share anything you don't want to share. You are invited to go as far as you want to go. I will tell you, when it comes to relationships, and Ted talked about it in announcements earlier a little bit about having these rooms in our life, and oftentimes, right, the living room or the good room looks really great. I wrote a weekly newsletter this week about my yard and how I had a choice. I only had enough time to mow half of it. Well, I went with the front. Why? Because that is what people see, right? My yard looks great if you're in my front yard. You go to my backyard, it's like, whoa, what's this guy been doing, Right? And that's how some of us live. And I think it's time to move on uh, from that. It's time to let people know uh, the whole story, to really get to know you. And so part of this process and why we encourage you to do this series with other people is because one of the things that's going to come out of this is deeper community and deeper relationships. Uh, and so as we uh, jump into that, uh, a lot of us see the world differently. We're talking about perspectives. And so I just wanted to remind us of that today. Uh, with this. This is a, a cartoon that somebody sent me. I've got a bunch of cartoons that people have sent me actually uh, recently, and so I want to put some of these up here today, right? Some of us will come today with the perspective of, wow, the glass is half full. Isn't life great? Awesome, right? Some of us are going to say, whoa, this glass is half empty. Whoa, 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 right? And wherever you're at today, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying it's, we're in different places, right? Some of us are going to say, half full. No, wait, uh, half empty. No, oh, half, oh, wait, what was the question again, right? Because we have trouble focusing, right? And some of us are just thinking, man, hey, I'd really like a cheeseburger, okay? 
The point is simple, and I've already said it. We are all coming from different places, right? And so when you hear someone share their story, you don't get, you don't get to judge that, right? You don't get to say, wow, you, you had that happen in your life? Uh, a lot of us have been in some really challenging places. We've had some challenging seasons in our lives. And so what we want to do is practice uh, a word that is so, so, a practice that's so rarely used, I feel like, these days, especially when it comes to public discourse, and the word is honor. We want to honor where everybody has been, because in reality, some of us have been through a lot, and it is a huge testimony to God that we're still standing, that we're still fired up, uh, that we're still moving forward uh, in life. And so we want to honor that despite all of our different uh, differences because we do see different things. Now, there's some other things that people have sent me, and I thought this is interesting, uh, right? This is the voices in this guy's head. His name is Bob, right? And he's got a voice in his head that's telling him uh, that he's stupid. And maybe some of you can relate to this. I know that I can as a part of my story. Stupid, 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 you idiot, what is wrong with you, moron? Just a, just a reminder this morning, God is never going to say those things to you. That's not how he operates. Uh, he will bring conviction, like, wow, you really probably should think about working on this, whatever this is. But he's never going to bring condemnation. Romans 8.1 says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For what the law was powerless to do, Christ did on the cross. That's Romans 8.1 and 2. Highly encourage you, if you have these voices in your head, to memorize that verse and preach it out loud to yourself when necessary, just speaking from personal experience, right? Some of us, it's, I love it, it says, sadly, Bob was too tired to argue, right? This is the world that some of us live. As some of you have gone into your stories, this is what you've been confronted with. And if that's you today, I'm, I'm really sad about that uh, because this is not what God promises us. This is not what scriptures tell us is the fruit of, of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, all those things, self-control, right? Uh, when Jesus showed up, when heaven showed up for us, it didn't look like this. Some of you have gotten this message as well, right? The book uh, is very large, much better. Uh, what is wrong with you? You felt like when you look back in your story, right, it's the pink post-it notes jumped out at you. Uh, I just want to encourage you again that your story doesn't get to define you. God gets to define you. What did Ben say when he was here a few weeks ago and talked about forgiveness? He said it's understanding that you're forgiven and forgiving others is, is refusing to let uh, the past dictate the future, right? I'll go back to Romans 8, 1 and 2, right? We, we have been set free. We have been redeemed. And so we get to live a new story. And this is why. For we are God's masterpiece. I've hammered this verse the last few weeks. We are God's masterpiece and by definition, a masterpiece is not junk, right? It might be challenging and painstaking and difficult to produce. It may go and look at times, right? The masterpiece may not look like what the finished product is, and that's true for all of us. But that doesn't mean that it's not good. That doesn't mean that, that God's not done with us yet. I love celebrating that fact, right? He's created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can uh, do the good things that he's planned for us long ago. God has a plan and a mission and a vision for us. And it's awesome, right? I don't know where I'm going, but I just know it's not going to be boring. It's going to be good. This is why Jesus came. So I want you to understand this morning that uh, you, you may be a product of your past, but you are not a prisoner to it, Okay. You are, not, uh, you are the product of your past, but you're not a, a prisoner to it because God is still writing a story. And so this is what we're talking about today, right, is what is it that he's writing in yours? And I want to start today. We're going to do this the next five weeks. I'm going to put up here a question, and we're, you're going to divide the hour that you have uh, with the number of guys in your group. So, and I honestly would encourage you to get out a timer and say you've got six minutes to answer this question if you want uh, because then everybody gets, uh, and you don't have to take the whole time, but then everybody gets an equal opportunity to share because most of us could talk an hour about ourselves actually and not even realize it. It'll feel like five minutes. What stands out to you is the big picture overall theme of your story. This is the one where we're going to start off today. And I figured I would just share a little bit with you guys uh, as well. So you can look at your life map if you want or you can just, you can just punt, right, from what memories come to mind as well. Uh, but a few things that I thought as I thought about the answer to this question for me. One is, well, how did I end up here? Right? That is a question that I've asked a lot. If you told me as a kid, 
that I would ever preach in a room that size. I'm pointing to our worship center across the hall that has 2,500 seats uh, if you're watching online. If you ever told me, number one, I'd be in that room as an adult, and number two, I'd get up and speak in front of other people, I would have thought it was crazy. If you would have told me I lived in a state other than Iowa and I wasn't a farmer as a kid, uh, I would have thought you were crazy. If you would have thought, uh, told me that I had been a raft guide or I went to some place other than Iowa State University because as a farm family, there's actually a scholarship at Iowa State in my family's name, but for some reason I felt God's whisper, mostly because I had a crush on a girl that went to a different school at the time. I felt like God was calling me somewhere else. And, and so I have had unexpected twists and turns. And what's amazing about this is when you put it all up here, uh, five different points in my life, I have a pink post-it note followed by the name of a person, followed by a T for a turning point. Um, I went to the University of Northern Iowa, didn't really know anybody and went through a, a pretty deep partying series that uh, session in life that lasted only for a few months because I realized it was a lot of work to babysit all my fellow students and whatever and I was really searching trying to figure out who I was and my friend Todd showed up uh, and the first day he moved into my dorm room with me the next morning he got up and started reading his bible I'm like what's the deal with this guy right and I'd been in church and Sunday school and all that stuff uh, went and worked uh, at a bible camp on the west coast uh, actually out in Montana and uh, had a really hard time struggling with, I mean, there were people working at this camp that didn't even believe in God, and I'm like, what are you doing here? And felt really judged and on my own, but that's where I ended up meeting my wife, uh, because her and I, through that hard, difficult summer, uh, realized that we believed in a lot of the same things and had very uh, similar core values. Uh, was working at a church in Seattle and really contemplated giving up ministry because it was hard. Lost respect for my boss there in the first week. Uh, just some of the things in, and that he did, I just could not believe, like this guy was leading a church. But got introduced to some discipleship, some spiritual growth tools that have shaped my ministry and made me uh, the way that I am. Was ready to quit ministry there and finally decided, okay, it's time to start looking for another church, another job or something after a nice discussion with my wife uh, one night. And the next morning... I got a message in my inbox on myspace.com from, yeah, that dates it a little bit, from Mark Brandt, who was running student ministry at the time here, said, we know that you work at a Lutheran church. We know you worked at Riverside Lutheran Bible Camp. We need somebody to help us with student ministry. Will you come move back to Iowa and come work at Hope? We'd like to interview you. And I was like, Iowa, I'm not going to do that, right? And I said, yes, eventually, after about six months, I it was really hard to let go of mountains and fresh seafood and living in a larger city and all those things. And God brought me here. Clearly a turning point as well. I said no to this job, right? Men's ministry, I thought, no, I've already got my hands full with these other three ministries I'm trying to run here at Hope. I said no twice. And Mike, Pastor Mike, wanted to know why I said no. I thought, oh, I should pray about this. And so I decided to practice what I preach to everybody else and to pray about it. And in that week... Some of you have heard me tell this story multiple times. I, I encountered five or six different guys whose lives were falling apart and they were hurting or they were asking really big questions. Like, I'm just retiring and I don't know what to do. There has to be more than life than this is basically what they said. And I thought, what if Men of Hope is about more than just coming together and hanging out? What if it's about being transformed? What if it's about the guys that are driving next door or driving by on Jordan Creek Parkway that don't even know that they need God's help? What if, what if we go after those guys and in a prayer time that week, heard these words, every man filled with hope. It's why we bring it up every week as our why we get together because that's what I signed on for, right? And none of this would have happened unless God was leading and guiding me. And so when I look at my story, one of the things that I can see is I am asking the question, oh my gosh, how did I get here? But also one of the themes is, wow, God's choice and God's direction was so much better than mine. Okay, so that's just a little window into one of the themes of my life. I could talk about the fact that I grew up on a farm and uh, loved it, but also really broke my dad's heart when I came to, to go into ministry. And, and then I started to realize, you know, this is kind of a lot like farming. Uh, I, and I even joked with my dad, uh, right? I get, to, uh, I get to work inside, though. You have to work outside a lot of the time. We do the same work and uh, and eventually I had a moment too, not that long ago, where I realized one of the themes in my life is that I'm called to farm 
It's just the soil changes, right? Some of you don't even realize that you're one of the crops that I farm, right? We plant seeds, we fertilize, we cultivate, and if we're really lucky, right, as Daryl testified to this morning in our announcements, we get to see a harvest. We get to see healing and salvation and transformation and all those different things. So, so that's just a little bit about me. You guys have themes in your life, and so let's start looking for them. Look for patterns, look for themes, look for words that just describe. As you look at the whole picture of your life, what is just an umbrella kind of understanding that ties all those threads uh, together? This can be a little difficult, a little challenging, but as you go and you hear each other, I think you'll begin to, to pick it up, okay? So I'm going to pray, and then uh, we'll leave this question on the screen, and you guys get the rest of the time in your small group. So let's pray. God, thank you for today. God, thank you that we are your masterpiece. God, thank you that you're not done with us yet. And God, thank you for an opportunity to look and see where you've been. God, so we can understand where you want to take us. God, where we feel anchored in, in pain or frustration or, God, where we just struggle to see where you were at a point in our life. God, show up and show us uh, where your love was at work. God, thank you for these guys. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for those who are watching online and are, are digging through their story even on their own. God, give them a, a, a place where they can share their story and learn more about themselves as well. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right. Have a good time, and we'll see you after a bit. <laughs>